Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we are a webinar, yes, um, and we don't mind if you call us that. Some people do take issue with that term. But unless you come up with something better, that's what we got. <laughs> um, we are a webinar, and um, we are we broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is posted to our website. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can see all of our archives. Uh, we have recordings of the episode that we show um, that are posted up to the Library Commission's YouTube account. And that's how we share that. Um, if there are any presentation slides we don't have today, that will be shared as well. Um, websites to go to, which is pretty much all today's is, <laughs> will be linked. Um, I think it is on there. Uh, both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So if you know of anyone who might be interested in any of the topics of our shows, um, colleagues, friends, neighbors, family, anybody, um, send them to our website. Uh, they can register for upcoming shows or watch any of our archives that we have. Uh, we do have archives going back all the way to the beginning of the show, which was in January 2009. So there will be some um, sessions, archives, recordings on there that are outdated, and um, but we're librarians, so we archive things and keep them there forever. Uh, so, but everything has a date of when it was actually broadcast, so you should be able to know when it's talking about and if things have changed since then. You know, be aware. But all the archives, as long as we have a place to put them, they'll stay out there. Um, we do a um, mixture of things here on Encompass Live, uh, book reviews, interviews, uh, training sessions, demos of services and products. Uh, basically anything library related is on, um, would be on the show. That's really our only criteria, it's something having to do with libraries. Um, sometimes some of the titles you might look at it and say and wonder why is that happening, but trust me, everything comes around to libraries in the end. That's our focus here at the Library Commission um, and all types of libraries. Um, we are the state agency in Nebraska for all libraries in the state, so uh, public, school, academic, special, prison librarians, any, anything and everything that's, li that's a library, um, we may have something on about that. We have Nebraska Library Commission staff sessions sometimes, and we have guest speakers sometimes. And this morning, I was going to say it's a mixture, but sort of, kind of mixture. You guys are part of the commission, but not, not commission staff, so <laughs> it is what it is. So this morning's topic is um, the new uh, Public Library Director's Guidebook, which, as you can see, this is their homepage, uh, the Library Commission's website, um, and it's our most recent uh, blog post about today's show. Um, and we're going to get into the history of it and everything, but today um, with us, you're still, right? Yes. Still. <laughs> cool. Well, I've been retiring for, you know, eight months. She's working on it. But Sharon Osenga is the co-director of our Central Plains Library System. Uh, um, remotely with us is Anika Ramirez, who's the director of our Three Rivers Library System. Hi, Anika. Hello. Hello. And Holly um, Duggan here is our C coordinator, uh, continuing education coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, and together, us and other people who are not here today, and previous staff of the Library Commission have been working on this uh, Library Director's Guidebook. We, and we finally have a um, ready for live, live, ready for prime time version. It's still a work in progress, we'll tell you that right off the bat. Um, so there will be some things that are being tweaked on it, and we'll talk about that and discuss that um, as we go this morning. So um, we're going to talk about the guidebook, what it is, uh, where it came from, and what's in there now. If you have any questions about any of the sections, let us know. Like I said, this is um, a new version of it. And we'll get into that. So if there's anything that you think should be different, or you want more information in there, or you're wondering about something as a library director, um, Tell us so we can add it to it. This is an online version of this guidebook and it's going to remain that. Um, so it can always be tweaked and modified on the fly as needed. Um, so do you want to go to it first? Do you want to talk about the history of it first? 
Well, I can start with the history of it. I first came across uh, a version, a print version of this when I came to Nebraska, so that's now 30 years ago. So it's, it has actually been in existence in some form for that long. It was originally put together by Marla Bowden, who uh, was with the regional networks before they became systems, which tells you how long ago <laughs> that was. Um, and I believe it was called at that time the Librarian's Handbook. Some of you may even still have a copy of this in your oh, libraries. Sure I'm sure they're around. I've seen them over the years. I believe they were in brown binders. So if you have a brown binder, take a look at it. It could be the original <laughs> version. Um, when I, uh, and I used it in my first four years when I was public library director because it really did help. I came from out of state, so I was really not familiar with Nebraska laws or how things were structured here or how libraries were funded. So it really helped me a lot. Uh, then when I went to the regional system, I wanted to use it with new library directors as I went around, um, public library directors. This is really just a, ma a handbook for public library directors. It we really do not specific, focus yeah. on school librarians uh, at all. Although some of the information probably is helpful mm -hmm. to school librarians, yeah. it's just not the purpose of it. Um, so I, over the years, revised it as needed actually my assistant, I would give her the information and she typed it in because of course at that time it was still print. And so we did that for a long time and then about three years ago, uh, I mentioned it to Laura Johnson who was the CE coordinator here um, and we decided uh, with the other system directors and commission staff to take it on as a, as a project to really start over and redo it uh, based upon today's needs and where we are with libraries because so much of it has changed. Um, we've been working on and off for three years yeah. on this. We did do a program two years ago in October at the state conference showing a very, well actually we couldn't even show it because our computer was down that day. The we talked, internet was yeah, down. We talked was about the rough draft version yeah. of it and really got some uh, good input from the people that were there on what they needed uh, as new directors, the information that was not being passed on to them that they needed from this uh, guidebook. So I think that was really helpful. Um, we then finished writing our sections and uh, once we got most of them in, I finally handed it off to Holly and she's done all the work on it since. And, um, I think you had somebody help you with that, but it's still, it's a huge project to do. So we're just, and before I, this is my final thing. I said, before I retire, I really would like to see this thing finish. <laughs> yeah. So my wish is coming true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was, it kind of got, as other things were going on, it, um, less, was it last year the year we talked about mm -hmm. it? And there was, you know, last minute who still needs to fix what right. things are left. And then, you know, life happens and things, you know, and it was actually at a Three Rivers library system at your annual meeting earlier this year, Anika, that we were talking about new library directors coming in with, um, and it would be nice if the previous director left a lot of resources and information and instruction, or was there was transition um, between the two people. More often than not, there isn't, unfortunately. So they come in like you did, totally blind, not knowing um, what is going on. Um, even if they're from Nebraska, they're new to being a library director. And they were discussing, I think it was at the board meeting there, that that would be great if we had some way to help them. There's so many new library directors coming up in libraries across the state um, that what can we do to help them? And I was like, oh, the guidebook. We should do. We should finish. And then, like a week later, Sharon says, "Hey, I'd like to talk about the, you know, totally retired right. director's guidebook." I said, "That's awesome. We're all, you know, think people are on the same page and didn't even know it." Right. And we did have a, a discussion about what it should be called. Yes. Um, there was a little. Yeah, cause we went, and I think this is. Yes, I like this. Yeah. It's definitely public libraries. It's yes. more direct. Although. Support staff could use it. It's mainly sure. for directors. And rather than a handbook, we just wanted to call it a guidebook. Mm -hmm. It is a guide. Uh, everything in it is not 
you know, may not necessarily pertain to your situation. Sure. So it really is just a guidebook to, to give you that and to direct you to where you can get more information. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that. Yeah, and as we said, it's specific to, as the title of the name, it says Public Library Director's Guidebook. Um, so it's gonna be very focused to if you are a public library director, but as Sharon said, there is some sections in there that would be useful to anybody because it's more general information about some things. Um, so if you're not a public library director, feel free to take a look at it. It's free and open out there on the internet. This isn't anything you have to log into or be in Nebraska library only to look at. Um, so some of the things there we do link out to other places like ALA or other um, websites that have useful information for librarians. Um, Some new trustees might really, you know, public library trustees might um, yeah. find it helpful to browse through some of the links and, and subjects too, so exactly. it could be used in that way as well. Yeah, if you're a trustee or a board member you want to know, what is my director supposed to know, or what should they, uh, do they do they know something about this, or is there something I can get to them to help them learn more, so um, that can be helpful as well. Um, I think that's a really good point. I have, over the years, come across so many library boards who have no concept of what the director does, how they spend their time. And where this really comes up is when they hire a new director and they don't tell them. <laughs> and <laughs> all of these things, and then we go in as a system person and they're just flabbergasted when we tell them all these things they have to do. And there's a section of the guy with Ben that compares what the board does with the library. Yeah. Um, director does. So let's go in and look at it. So there's a couple of different ways you can get to this. Um, of course right now we have a link because we have a show here but that will be going away. Oh, I'll be moving down. We have a search on our site. Um, let's see if I type guidebook. No. This might be director. Let me start typing director. Okay. Director. Director's well, I have to type it Director's Library. Um, and that would be at Nebraska Library. Well, that's a director. Oh, there's a there guidebook. Is. Library Director's Guidebook. So you can get to it by searching. Also, we have linked it from over here. And I'm not sure if it's in other places as well. It was. Yeah. At the moment, under our accreditation and certification, which are um, big programs we do here at the Library Commission, uh, boards can be certified, librarians can be certified, and the library can be accredited. Um, and we have linked from here under the librarian section, which is something that commonly our library directors do, a link to the director's guidebook. I'll also note here to let you know, we also have a companion document mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. library boards as well library board manual um, so there's more manuals a guidebook whatever but so there are two documents online all um, online based specifically for what all library boards should do and then this one for what directors should do so but I'm gonna go into the director's guidebook right now so you can see what it looks like so uh, this is the main page of it uh, we may have more of an introduction at some point. Like I said, this is a work in progress, but we're working on more of the sections information first. Um, and I'll mention also, this is our the library director's guidebook and the library board manual. You see, they are both, they're very similar, but different colors. Uh, we started out with the manual, got that one done first and up here, and it was blue, and we said just to make it, you know, make a difference, uh, went to green. Uh, Tessa Terry is a, uh, um, graphics design type person we have here working at the Library Commission, and she's the one who's done this, um, making it interactive and has done a really good job. She did the manual first, and then we had her do the guidebook. So thank you very much to Kessa for um, making these look um, so, so good there. Um, so where do we want to, do you want to take over and show some things on here? Yeah. So that's how you can get to the director's guidebook. Um, we're going to go through some of the sections of it, uh, not a page by page, as we mentioned no, earlier, because that it's like there's a lot of sections here. Yeah. Um, but you can see the basic setup is it's just an alphabetical of different topics that would be um, that library directors need to know about. Um, I tell you, we are also working on a search feature for it um, that hopefully will be coming very soon, and we have a demo page of that that we can show you as well but um, go ahead um, well, some of these pages if you go through um, 
they're just they're links to other resources such as this funding um, and some of them are from ALA or some of them have webinars if you want more information more resources and then we have other pages that do have a lot more of the important information so for this accreditation certification it starts right here with the important questions the dates you absolutely need to know from day one um, and then we have the more information about the certification process um, and then links at the bottom this is pretty much how most of the pages are set up um, not a lot trying not to duplicate more in-depth pages we already have on our library commission website because we do have a lot of information out there but gathering it into one place where you can find oh here's the basics why I care about this now I'll go on to the main page and get all the details exactly um, let's see and then we have the rest of the events we have the board of trustees which links to that library board manual that you can look through um, which is important for any director to know what their board is doing. Exactly. And of course to see also I'll take you to another spot in this yes. particular document. So about so related to governance. Right. Um, and talks a little bit more about how the library boards are established. Um, some of the there we go. The there response, that's that's wonderful. Yes. Between what does the library right. board do and then what does the library director do? So and might I, I want to interject here. This is just one of the most terrific things we have is this responsibilities of library board versus library director because we so often find library boards trying to do the duties of the library director and so this is a great graphic to pull off and actually if you have a board meeting coming up use it with your board as a training because or have your system person come in and do it for you if you don't want to do it but I think it's very very helpful um, if this is an area where you're having some problems and there's in the trustee manual there is a PDF printout available of that chart oh, which it makes it a lot easier to print out too just a little side note I think of this guidebook more as like a sort of like an, an FAQ you know and I think that's how we came up with the subjects um, as well as, you know, what do people ask us questions about the most um, and sort of developed it in that way. So um, if you, it's browsable, you know, if you have a question and you can't get a hold of any, uh, your system director or the NLC, you know, you can come here and, and browse for the information that you're looking for um, at that time. So I like thinking of it as an FAQ. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of pages I did want to point out, um, like this budgeting page, um, making sure you know what your fiscal year is. Um, and we do have more of the budget process written out. Um, and these, that's good. I like these. I saw this there too. Yeah, the flow charts. Yeah, these came from Francine, didn't they? Right? They were based on Francine's, and then we put them up. Um, so thank you to her. That was awesome. Then it goes through um, what you need to do to prepare your budget and present it and um, then the implementation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we also have resources on this case. I know the resources at the bottom here are actually from other, some of these from other states. If you hover over them, I think some of these, um, State Library of Iowa, um, well, that one's in the of ALA, and um, well, that's PDF of that um, budget process uh -huh. uh, graphics. Right. Yeah. right. So, um, so I think if there's resources out there that have even we found that have a really good description of something, we will link out to it. So um, you'll be you know popping out to this to other places, and then you can back to it to see what is maybe the Nebraska Nebraska specific um, part information. And then if we go down to the important information worksheet, that's, that's a good way to yeah. Um, so this worksheet checklist was really so mm -hmm. you have one document that you could just really go through the steps of what you absolutely need to know during your first three months on the job. Um, right. Uh, one of the when we did the program two years ago, one of the things we were asked for is something like this, you know, what what am I going to need to know in my first couple of months? Um, 
and they had act, and they also asked for a calendar, which is kind of impossible to do because those dates change, and Holly will cover that, I think, yeah. where they can find that information. But these are the kinds of things when you come in as a new director, certainly when I came, um, there were some very specific things, like where are all the light switches, but because we came into the library an hour before the library actually opened, only some of the lights were turned on during that hour, and you needed to know which ones. It's just those kinds those of little, little things. things, and we had, um, you know, a stupid thing like uh, you have either heating or air conditioning. So you had, I mean, I didn't know that, and now all of a sudden I found out. Well, I have to, I have to know kind of what day of the year we're changing over to air conditioning. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, little things like that that you need to know. And I love that we start with library building because as a library director, you actually become kind of a quasi maintenance person a lot of times. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I was called on the weekend because ballasts went out in lights and everybody thinks there's a fire. So, um, about keys. And keys. A really good one. Find out who all has keys. Just basic names. Mm -hmm. And some of these are questions that you just wouldn't even think to ask. Like you wouldn't know to ask some of this stuff. So it's a nice checklist um, and a good way, you know, to introduce yourself to some of your city officials or your city workers and stuff, you know, just by knowing these questions to ask. Asking them these uh -huh. questions, yeah. So that it branches out into the community and, and policies, getting a better understanding of what is going on um, in the actual administration. Start thinking about statistics. Here's some dates to that 46, mm -hmm. sort of date ranges, I guess. Nebraska. Yeah, and I think that's what Sharon was saying. They did want a calendar of everything you need to know and which month everything needs to be done. And unfortunately, there isn't always a standard. It changes. It varies every year. Um, so there's ranges of when things may be happening, but then specific deadlines will be announced. Um, each town municipality may have different deadlines for when you need to do things with that city about getting your budget to them or um, when they want you to have board meetings that matches up or doesn't conflict with other things. I mean, there's just no too many variables out there. Right. Yeah. So um, the best, you know, the, it's going to be something you'll have to just figure out for your specific library. What are my deadlines going to be? Um, based on looking up some of the things in here and in the rest of the guidebook about important things that I have to be doing. Um, and some of this too, this checklist is kind of getting you familiar with the the library mm -hmm. commission's website of where you can find some of these other resources. Mm -hmm. Actually, question 51 is an interesting question. Where is the history of the library? Mm -hmm. It's quite in, so many of our libraries in the last 20 years have had like a 100th birthday or maybe even only 75 years or whatever, but a lot of the towns want to celebrate that. Well, it sure helps if you know the history of your library. Um, it's not easy to find in many cases, but certainly if you can, take a look around in the files or ask somebody. Um, actually, one of my, I always felt that one of my best sources of information when I came here was the library staff that had been there for five or 10 years because they know this stuff and it doesn't hurt to ask those questions of them um, to find out. I think it's, but I think that's a good question to kind of be aware of. And there's like the history of the library as so, you know, the, uh, Maybe pretty version of the library was first started in 1902 yeah. by the Women's Association, mm -hmm. etc. But then there's the institutional knowledge history of I've right. been here for 10 years, and this is why we do this thing that we uh -huh. do that seems weird, but trust me, it has there's to work a reason. That way. Yeah. Or yeah, we started doing this this way, and I did, and it, it didn't work, so that's why we're not. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not sure why this happens. Let's ask someone else, or let's change it. <laughs> yeah. So there's both those kinds of history mm -hmm. um, that you want to try and you know. Um, be aware of to put together of why is my library the way it is now. Mm -hmm. 
So I was noticing up there it had the, the link to the library, it says library Nebraska Library Laws. Let's have a little yeah. further. Yeah, that link needs to be, if that's, is that actual hot link from there or does that do? Yeah, okay, that should go through. This texture. Yeah, yeah. That needs to be changed. So things will need to be tweaked on this. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> there is an actual page yeah. that we have about right. Nebraska Library Laws that that can go to. And it's, um, a, it's actually in the director's guidebook. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. There's a law about section about laws, yeah. So things, this, as you can see, there's a lot of sections of this. Yeah, um, and then it goes into yeah. the collection. And, um, is there a PDF at the bottom of this so they can print this? There out? is. is um, oh, it is a PDF. Yeah, okay. this is a PDF. Super. Yeah. 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 There really we cool. go. Yes, that's yeah. that's great. So that opens up as a new document mm -hmm. that you can then print out and, mm -hmm. and um, or save it and then add mm -hmm. you know, you know, make it what you want to. Maybe you can make it. Library board. rules and things you need to know and then about the findings is you know and this is a document too that I think um, an outgoing director could use in succession planning so maybe you've already been there for 20 years but some of this is just stuff that's in your head um, yeah. so using this document to write it down and just have that information in one place you know you know you're retiring in a year or two or whatever um, so it could be used in that way and not just as a new director having to go out and collect all of this information. Right, yeah. If you are a current director, look at this now. I mean, we do, we, now, the name of this Encompass Live show is the new Public Library Director's Guidebook, but that's just because the guidebook itself is new. It doesn't mean this is a document <laughs> only for new Public Library yeah. Directors. I want to make that clear. Sure. As you can see, the title of it is just Public Library Directors Guidebook. So um, if you're new, of course it's useful. If you've been around for 20, 30 years, it could be useful too if there's things that you don't know about or um, in that case. And yeah, this is what I was looking at too. There is a checklist for an exiting director, but it's different than the, the knowledge yeah, one. Right. So, it's kind of doing all these little tasks before you leave and right. making sure, like, when was it last done? Mm -hmm. When the new person was. Um, and just some things that you need, you should get organized and updated before you leave. So this is this is really specific to I am retiring in a year or I've already found a job and I'm going to be going in a month or something. I got to get these things done. But if you're just a current director and you want to make sure. Is everything about the library somewhere that somebody right. knows? Let's yeah. go to that other document, the knowledge, the and see. Do I even know where all the things I should know? <laughs> if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, can somebody else do this? <laughs> Find these things. So that was a little shorter text. Mm -hmm. But it's specific to I have to make sure that this right. is all able to be handed over. Yes. Passwords. Passwords are down here. Passwords is a very important topic. Yeah. And this is more links about the Nebraska Access right. databases that um, your CE password um, for the yearly survey, bibliostat, password, and logins. Um, and then one of the income slide. Yes, we did a show on Encompass Live about um, managing your passwords and keeping them secure. So just so uh, um, about passwords in general, that would be good for you to um, watch that. Um, and that's not too old, I don't think. Um, this is an area where there's a big F for failure <laughs> between outgoing directors and new people coming in. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone to a library and they have no passwords it left. Yeah. And so they can't even, and oftentimes they can't even get into the computer at all without having somebody come and reset the computer. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really um, critical that somewhere these passwords are kept. Um, uh, the CE password and your bibliostat, those are easy enough to get. Those are but standard if, ones. Right, but if the computer find. itself has a password that you right. can't get into, or your, um, your, email. Your, uh, your email, your automation system, your ILS. So there are a number of passwords that need to be somewhere, and 
Mm -hmm. You know, I know they tell us not to write them down, but if you're exiting, it would if be nice if you wrote yeah. them down. If you are an out woman director, you need to have these things yeah. written down so that someone right. can get into the next As position. an incoming yes. director, that is something you will probably need to do. That's one of the first things you're going to need to find out. And hopefully the outgoing person is still available if they didn't leave them. And in certain situations, you would then change those passwords as well. Like if there is a generic library director at so it's a public library email address. Once you take over, you'd want to change that password so that it's new to you and not the old person doesn't have that anymore. Things like your CE password for doing updating your continuing education, at least that those are things that we provide to you that you don't have any control over. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, and Nebraska Access as well, the databases that we have um, password access to, we provide them. That's why those three are there. We give you those. This is where you can find them or find more about them. Your own local passwords you need to um, Find out, find out they what they are. are and decide which ones need to be changed because staff have left and you still have to come in. What, there's the library laws. Yeah, so um, we do have a section here at library laws, yeah. So this is just, we're not lawyers. This is just. Yeah, does it say that? I should say that at the top. We are not yeah. lawyers, but and it, it, this is not legal advice here at all. It is just a link to there are certain chapter 51 of the Nebraska um, statutes is um, what um, specifically refer um, applies to public libraries. Um, there are also some other sections of the state law that also um, uh, relate to things as well. Um, these are the statutes that you do have to follow. These are not guidelines, recommendations. Here's a good way to run it. This is the law. So definitely take a look at that. Be aware of it. Um, what's good in here is it does tell you about um, what's in the laws is um, how to set up a new library. So if you are um, thinking about uh, creating a library in your town, this is where you can find out what do I need to do to make that happen. Um, they can also use this to make sure that the things that were done for your library were done correctly and there's nothing that you've missed um, being aware of. Um, the Open Meetings Act is also very important to libraries for when the library boards are having their meetings, um, that you, you must adhere to those making them public and open to everyone to attend. Um, there are some uh, criteria for having closed sessions, um, but generally speaking, everything, all public uh, entities, they have to have public um, open meetings um, available to the public. And this is laws, and I'll say now because I know we've got some people that did register today from out of state and people that may be watching, this is specific to Nebraska. Every state is going to have their own statutes for libraries and their own statutes relating to open meetings. So make sure you look for yours if you're not in Nebraska, because um, that is very important in a place where some people could get into trouble if they well, cannot. I went to uh, to an Open Meetings Act uh, workshop a couple years ago with Brenda Ewey when she was at Southeast Library System, and it was really eye-opening for me, and particularly in small towns where you may have a board of five. Well, if the three of those five get together in the coffee shop in the morning, whether they're talking about library business or not, that is considered a meeting. And it would then have needed to be posted. And all of these things that come up. So there's some really tricky things under this uh, open it's meeting here. And yeah. if there's any kind of conflict in the community that might come back to haunt, uh, library board members, it's best that they not transparency do some of those kinds of things yeah. because they can be misconstrued as having a meeting a private illegally. Meeting. Right. right. Yeah. Transparency is very important to public libraries. I mean, we're a public institution, mm -hmm. this kind of a thing. But um, it's, yeah. So anyway, this does have the link there to right. the full statutes if you want to go to the actual. Um, legislature's website and read them, but we have pulled out the specific ones here that are uh, library relevant. Are there any questions so far, Krista? I don't know, let's see, yeah, does anybody have any questions? Um, we've been talking about some of the things that we think are important and interesting here. Um, oh, hey, look, we do. Uh, but you can see some of the different topics down the side there as we're scrolling up and down. If anything there catches your eye, you want us to jump into it or you want to know more. Um,
Okay. In the, <laughs> I had to read this myself first just to get exactly what she was saying. Okay. In the what if scenario of getting hit by a bus, <laughs> what's your advice on how to prepare a staff person to run the library until a new director couldn't take over? Um, so what, I guess, what should a current director, like, you can, anything can happen. Um, Absolutely. So what should I already you know, or die? Not even thinking of I know I'm retiring in a right. month, in a year, but just in case, what should I do? Or how much time should be allowed for a succession plan? Um, That's an excellent question, and it certainly depends on the organization. Uh, we have very few libraries that actually do succession planning. Um, I can think of a couple that have. I have one li one public library that that knew two years. Uh, before the director was going to go. So they definitely, uh, and the person that had been the assistant was definitely primed and taught to become the next director. But usually that doesn't happen. What happens is they just up and go, and then you have that open time. So the question is good on priming somebody or training them. So if you have somebody there, I always suggest that at least get them through the basic skills courses, um, particularly. Um, Whatever ones are on administration, there's, the library. Management, there's several. Management supervision is coming up. Yeah. Right, so management maybe. supervision, um, governance is always a good one. Mm -hmm. Budget, budget, yeah. budget, excellent one. Policy. So at least get through some of the basic skills courses, um, and then again, let them know where the passwords are. Let them know. Hopefully, they know who the board members are. Uh, at least the board president. Because uh, mm -hmm. these are people that they would then be working with. Like you said, you can fill out that important information mm -hmm. worksheet and yeah. keep that updated. Right. When you, even if you're not even planning on retiring or leaving anytime soon, as you know, this is new directors are encouraged to find this out. But as a current director, go and do this. Mm -hmm. Print it out. Fill it out, file it somewhere. Well, and make um, sure they know where it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you can have that in a binder or just on your computer and they have no idea. Or they, they don't have the password to get to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much, if they do want to do succession planning, how much time, I mean, I don't know, should be allowed for a succession plan? Are you talking about transition? Because sometimes that's not even available. I mean, Right. Usually yeah. there's no transition, but if you know, lucky enough to. Uh, you know, I think a year out would be a lot. Most people don't know until three to six months out that they're going to be going in. If you get a trend, like if you have a spouse that gets a transfer, that could be right. 30 or 60 days. Retiring and uh, getting a new job. I think those totally are two different, different scenarios. I mean, most yeah. of us, I knew, I mean, I knew three years ago my exact retirement date. So and I told the board. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we had this long period, probably almost too long. <laughs> but, um, but I think as soon as you know, that's when you start. You have to start. Right? Um, but it doesn't hurt to have them train. I, you know, the more you train your staff, the more they can take work off of your shoulders. Yeah, and it's not even just about succession planning and what if something happens to me and has to take over. Um, and I know. I'll preface this thing. We have many, many libraries who are single person run or one employee and all volunteers. But having a backup person just so that you have someone else who can do something and you just can't make it. Mm -hmm. My kid is sick, so I, I, as a director, I can't come in, but I know volunteer um, Bob, he knows mm -hmm. the basics and I can hand off. I'm confident that he will be able to run the library today. Just, some, just thinking about that, not even thinking about the getting hit by a bus scenario. Well, I just had uh, this summer one of my public libraries I was visiting, and she was out there as director doing the summer reading program. She goes, my children's person has been in the hospital three times in the last week, mm -hmm. and I have to take this over now for the rest of the year. Well, you better that's hope that there's yeah. some notes for the rest of those programs. Mm -hmm. So you just never know when something like that's going to happen. Communication. There should be a yeah. section on communication. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'm not sure if we can answer this question, but we can um, hypothesize about what. And I think do we, I don't know if we have, um, disaster planning. Oh, 
Uh, we do have, I saw it come up, uh, it's on the checklist, I think. Yeah, Something about, do you have a disaster plan? Right. Someone um, wants to know what might be happening to public libraries in the Harvey hurricane disaster and the upcoming right. um, We did, uh, we, Nebraska Library Commission, it was when Shannon White was still here, did a two-day disaster workshop. We did it in a couple of different places across the state. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely fantastic to, to learn what should be in a disaster plan um, and then to actually work with various types of things that had gotten wet or whatever. And then I went to one at U UNK, I think last year did one as well. And again, we were working with like uh, wet pictures, wet magazines, how do you do, what kinds of materials do you need to have? Those are wonderful. Number one, if you can find a person, and a lot of the universities have a person, I think. The mm -hmm. university libraries, or maybe just the universities, have people that work in this area. And if you know that person, um, contact them and do some work on it. I know there's stuff online about it. But we can add more. But I think, a, yeah, I think a hands-on way of dealing with some of that stuff, just to do it, it's actually kind of, it's a terrible thing, but it's kind of fun yeah. if you're just practicing, I'm sure, in real life with, with a track. It's really like stressful. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not it's it's fun. fun. It's just horrible. Like um, I did talk to uh, Janet Wilkie from UNK when they had that, uh, they had like a mini tornado yeah, go the through it, and nice. their roof got, and so much of their collection got wet. They luckily had a disaster plan. Uh, there and luckily enough, we had a local company that could uh, that loaned them the um, flats, whatever those things are called that you put stuff on, um, and they were able to put their books on that and then you know wrap them up and ship them ship them off to be frozen. She's uh, trying them to. And then, um, but as we all know, water has a way, and no matter that they thought things weren't wet. Hmm. Weeks and months later, they were finding more and more things wet because it just it didn't takes that long for it to seep through. So they lost a tremendous amount of the collection, even though they had a disaster plan uh, in position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was nice to be able to get it offsite, freeze dried until they need until they had time to deal with it. But unfortunately, with the hurricane, how much is going to be left? It depends. It's going to depend. Yeah. Um, Anything that's left is wet, probably already if molded. We'll go to somewhere we can get to our missions homepage. Um, yeah, go up on the search when you're on the glass up there too, um, and type in disaster planning. Oh, You've got the keyboard, all right? <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> there. We actually have um, added the app on the commission's website uh, page there, preservation of black materials, which is about what to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, um, look there. And so we do have information there, which we're linked to this from somebody yeah. in the guidebook. We'll figure that out. Um, where we put together resources. Um, this is specific, like Nebraska has its own emergency management agencies, as like the FEMA, the federal one. Um, oh, D plan do. is an excellent, that's one that I have looked at. D plan is really yeah. good. So if you don't have a disaster plan, use this as a model. It's a planning tool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a um, fill in the blanks mm -hmm. type thing yeah. of what, what's going, what's our institution is and what mm -hmm. we need to do. Um, so that is where you get a lot of good resources. I also do know if we're talking, since we are talking about this here, about um, what we can do to help the libraries that are having issues. I know um, Texas Library Association is working on you know, within their libraries about what they need, um, what we can donate to them or whatever. So look up Texas Library Association. And I assume in Florida, as um, Irma is yeah. going to come in, which you'll get there in a few days, same situation, look for Florida Library Association. That's where you usually this kind of thing, either the state library or the, that state's library association is the best place to go to for information about what can I do to help the libraries if that's where you want to put your um, your energy towards to, to helping. Right. May I, I want to interject something here. Probably 20 years ago now, our little town of 170 people, Oconto, got hit, direct hit, mm -hmm. Halloween, mm -hmm. with a tornado that basically tore most of the town away. And so we the library was rebuilt from scratch, and we got 
uh, donations from around the world. But this is the same thing we hear from every disaster. Be careful what you donate. Yes, because we got, you know, everybody went to the attic and Aunt Susie's old books that were all moldy were up there, but oh, they can use these in that library. But then you have to use your time and energy to go through those, and then you have to dispose of them. Um, so uh, that's just a little word of warning about, you know, if you're going to do it, Ask actually money, find, out what, find out what they need. Usually it's money. Or look somewhere to donate yeah. money that right. they, can, they can use for what they do need is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Oh. All right. Um, oh, I know. You have, we have glossary and then way down near the bottom. Uh, go all the way down now. Down in the W's, I can't remember what. Uh, oh, terms. Not terms. What's the difference? Oh, it's see. Not <laughs> okay. Was, I was like, do I say the same? Yeah. <laughs> So we do, we, yeah, we do them back and forth. Yeah, glossary is if you're um, new to libraries or even not new. And you know, we always say we love our acronyms. Every organization, every profession loves their acronyms. Here's the ones that you may need to, um, if you're not sure, um, especially if you're new to public libraries. Some people have been in academic and moving to public, or um, they're the new, they've been, they're the director for the first time. Um, how to get on top of what we're talking about when we say ILL and OCLC and ACRL, and I'm sure I could rattle off more, but I'll stop. <laughs> Going down. Let's see what else is on there. Thanks to E-Rate. E-Rate, here. This is you, Chris. E-Rate. Um, yeah, this is me. This is what I do. Um, well, one of the things, things that I do. Things you do. Um, e -rate, um, if you're interested in getting a discount on your internet, telecommunications, anything going on with creating, um, building a new library, addition to a library, just updating your technology or your computers or your computer lab. Um, E-Rate is a federal program that gets discounts on that. Um, it is, many libraries have been using it in Nebraska for telephone discounts. Telephone is being phased out, but they're increasing support to add um, for internet, for um, high-speed internet, Wi-Fi, anything related to that. Um, I have the what is E-Rate link is actually um, another one where I just Go ahead and go ahead and click on that. Rather than duplicating, I've got a page of the basics. Who's eligible? How much you can get? Um, I do annual training on that. Will be coming up this fall, uh, November ish, usually for the upcoming year. So look for that in your areas around the state. I go to each um, library system, right? At, at least, least once. once. Yeah. Sometimes more than once, depending where I'll And you do one of these and have a And I do online, an online version of the training as well. So if you're unable to get to a uh, session, so if you're looking for discounts, this is a good thing to know. The FCC, there are many um, changes happening in our federal government, as we all hear about. But And we do have a new FCC commissioner. However, he is supportive of e -rate. He thinks it needs some changing, which is true. And I agree. <laughs> it needs help clean, uh, cleaning up, uh, not cleaning up, um, simplifying, really. And there have been attempts to do that, but more is needed. So he is a supporter of it, but wants some changes. Um, I don't hear any noises coming out about um, eliminating it. Uh, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, this is not LSTA money. This is not IMLS. No, as, as that, this is a whole separate um, funding that yeah comes out of fees that we pay. So, um, Document retention. Let's take this a look. I think, is this the thing that's, oh, and did not Scott just do something on document retention recently. Do you remember? Did he do oh, an Encompass uh, Live? Yes. Uh, 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 about, yes, yes he did. Yes. He did an Encompass Live um, about um, administrative meeting. Admi yeah, but it was really it was uh, dealt with document retention, uh, a big piece of it. So we might want to put a link to that. There. That was recent since we worked right. on this. Yeah. yeah, we did a session on, um, you know, if you're always weeding your library collection, but what about yeah. the documents and the materials that you have for the library director, your resources, your um, everything that we told you you need to know? <laughs> yeah. um, that would that's a yeah administrative weeding yeah making space administrative weeding we just did it in April so it's brand new on the um, Encompass Live session that we did so I can add that yep. yes we'll add a link to that from there um, let's 
friends and foundations. I think we've got a section on that. Um, friends and foundations are a great thing to have to help support your library. Um, here in Nebraska, and we just did a session on this too, and more in depth session on the slide. Uh, United for Libraries um, is the association for library trustees, advocates, friends, and foundations. And Nebraska hat pays for a statewide subscription for all Nebraska library staff to be able to um, access their materials. There are trustee courses, um, training online courses. Um, little short, mm -hmm. the, um, short takes, short takes, short takes, yeah, trustee short takes. Um, so anything you want to know about being a, a trustee or board member and having a, being a friends or foundation group. Um, our, yeah, that's, I think that, yeah, that's the link specifically to our Nebraska page. Um, and if you need the password for that, there's a, it is password, something that we run. Yes. Mm -hmm. Holly, ask Holly and she will get you the password to get into the things that, um, the workshops and the sessions that are um, that we specifically pay for for all the libraries in the state. Does anybody have any other questions? Any of the other sections here you want us to jump into or to um, clarify more about? or if you're wondering about something and you want to know what we said or something that you think should be. And like I said, we said this is online now. Um, and as Sharon said, this was previously in print. It mm -hmm. will not be in print anymore. This and the, um, uh, the trustee. trustee manual are online only. You're welcome to print out each page or something if you want to, or a lot of things that, as we mentioned, we've created PDFs or things that you can print out one sheet about different parts of it. So these, um, both of these documents will be changed as needed. We'll add things as people um, bring them to our attention, modify things if things change. So um, let us know. Um, would you click on the who's who? Oh, actually, who's systems first. We'll see that. We have here in Nebraska uh, four regional library systems. That's what we're talking about here Central Plains, Sharon, and Three Rivers, and Nika, but we also have Southeast and Western. Um, and I think in that checklist of, uh, yeah, the checklist, the first thing it says is reach out to your system, um, wherever your system director is at the time. Uh, the library systems are funded by us. They're kind of, I think of you guys as our um, person on the ground. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, between the commission and the libraries, if necessary, people can of course, concurrently to us, of course, mm -hmm. too, but um, we have people regionally located in four sections of the state, and they are your um, first line of defense for a lot right. of the things that you might need to know about running your library. I think this kind of goes hand in glove with what Anika started with, where she says, I view this as FAQs. So you can look at this and read a section and say, wow, this still isn't answering my question. And we suggest right. that you go to your regional person, because I've always said, if I can't answer your question, I can certainly guide you to the person mm -hmm. that will know the answer to that question. Right. And um, that's what we're there for. I mean, that's our sole purpose is to work with libraries in this state and help them in, improve. Yeah. And then the very last thing on the whole list there is the who's who. And that links to Directory of the Library Commission staff, those of us here. Um, our commissioners, we are run, um, governed by a, a commission, um, by an advisory council with library systems and Nebraska library directory. So this is who's who Nebraska related. Mm -hmm. Separate from that, we have the professional organizations link, which is the new organizations, um, Nebraska Library Association, but then um, other organizations out there. That would be the um, Right, mm -hmm. ALA. Yeah. ALA, you know, libraries, Mountain Plains, we're part of the Mountain, the region of Mountain Plains Library Association, we are kind of that. And Association for Rural and Small Libraries, great organization. Mm -hmm. uh, Conference okay. is going on right now. It is, yes, they're in Utah at the moment. <laughs> um, their name is self explanatory, I think. If you are a small rural library, this is the group for you. Uh, join it, pay attention to what they're doing, look at their website, look at their Facebook page. Um, they focus, you know, ALA is great, PLA is great. Um, and PLA, I've got it. Some of years. those, some of their um, conferences to some people are too big. Mm -hmm. uh, not enough, not you know, because it's covering like American Library Association, every vendor, you know, library, every size. 
small libraries and every there's you know there's a specific you know college library section of a you know ALE and things everybody has their own subset ARSL would be for all of our small rural um, libraries definitely take a look at them we're a completely volunteer run organization too which is awesome on their conference it's all there's no um, paid staff to do anything with them I wish I knew how long they've been around doing that but what? Air Air I was just thinking to myself there. It was starting when I was first in Simpson, so it's been oh, around okay. probably about 25 years now. I mean, it's it, it took a long time for it to get going because mm -hmm. it's totally run by volunteers. Exactly. You know, yeah. you just have to do it as your time, and so it's I I think that's why. Mm -hmm. I went to the conference in Little Rock, Arkansas. It was a really good conference, and you know, the ideas were much more, um, you know, sometimes you hear these ideas from big public libraries and it's hard to figure out how can I tweak this to meet a population of 300 people or whatever, you know, and so I think the biggest there was maybe uh, communities of like 25,000, which is still a big jump from 300 to 25,000, but um, it's a little bit more, um, some of the ideas, you know, are a little bit more easy to tweak um, from that range. So it was a really good conference. It's a good organization. Yeah, a lot of the people at the larger or larger conferences do say, this can be scaled to any size library. Okay, but how? <laughs> I need the next step, and that's what you get at air as I think is right. here's how I scale this yeah. to my yeah. library in a town of three hundred or a thousand. I was at ALA one time, a gal gets up and she starts out, she goes, I work for a small library system. We only serve 150,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> I am just burst into laughter. And she's like, what's going on? And, and everybody's like, well, most of us serve under 25,000 people. So. <laughs> Definition of small is not the same. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's a little after 11, which isn't bad. We're about up to our hour. Um, Anybody have any last minute questions you want us to answer right now? You've got us on the line. Type into your GoToWebinar interface and we'll get to that. Um, we won't cut off until we're done with any, any, any issues or questions anybody have. Um, any last minute things anyone here wants to say about the guidebook and what we've been doing here? I just think it's going to be an excellent tool. Not just, as we said, for new directors, mm -hmm. but I think for anybody working in public libraries, I think it's going to be a good tool. Yeah. And these are great. I mean, even if you're not in Nebraska, I mean, I go to other other states and get information off their mm -hmm. websites all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's going to be really helpful for people that aren't in Nebraska as well. Mm -hmm. I did do some searching on, you know, library director handbooks or manuals mm -hmm. myself to see what else was out there. And there are some other states, I found quite a few mm -hmm. that had some of them, um, similar formats, and some that I couldn't find anything in that particular state. They may not, I mean, they may have resources and information, but not just gathered into what they yeah. call a handbook or guidebook mm -hmm. or something. Um, so um, if, you know, as I said, if you're not from Nebraska, feel free to look at ours. Be aware of which parts are Nebraska specific and which ones aren't. Um, but look to your own state too to see if there is something similar that um, has your state specific information. Any last words, Anika, before we wrap up? No, I'm just excited about this. I think it's a really good go-to resource for people, so. I'm glad we've been finally able to get it out there in, you know, in a nice, Nice pretty version. Yeah, looks good. <laughs> um, I'll like to, um, something I do want to mention, and oh, I don't, um, actually go up to the go up to the main page, go to the home page of it, um, and oh, uh, it's for us. Yeah, main page. Yeah, and then just um, we are where it says main .spx, Put a two at the end of main. We are working on for both this. <laughs> And for both this and the uh, board manual search feature, you see now there's a new search box. Our one of our computer builds Vern Bias, thank you, Vern, just did this last night, so it's a work in progress. It does work, however, um, that you can um, you'll be able to search specifically in the guidebook. Now we do have a search, as you've seen on our our 
um, many more. Many of the other searches are entire website if you want to, but this and then the one that will be on the board manual search just this particular um, document. So you can see here um, all the things that come up with budget, and in the upper right it said so this is anything's just the only things within the director the guidebook, and then there brings you right back to the um, guidebook itself, which now goes to the real page that has no search box. But so searching <laughs> functionality is in the works. Um, where he just sent me the link. Uh, of that, and so we're going to look at it and see what we, if we think like it, it works. A few things might need to be tweaked to make um, the searching and indexing of it work exactly as we need it to, but um, that will be coming soon for both documents, this and the board manual. That's something that um, I don't know if anyone's asked us to do, but we asked ourselves and said, We yeah. this. <laughs> it's a huge document uh, to scroll through and figure out, you know, where, what I'm trying I want to figure out see. where things are. Yeah. Um, can be difficult sometimes. Yeah. So that will be coming to you. As we said, this is a um, live thing, so um, we will tweak and add things and change things as needed. Always got a whole list. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, all the things to see here. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't look like anybody typed in any desperate, urgent questions okay. they've answered right now, so that's fine. I think we'll wrap it up for today. Um, reach out to us, let us know. Um, Holly would probably be the person to send any comments, questions about what could or could be in, in the guidebook if you want to, or any of us can pass on. Except Not Sharon will be on soon. <laughs> She'll be retired. Still I can around. pass it off. Yeah. <laughs> you won't find it. Um, and we'll get to that. So, um, awesome. All right. Now I'll take the last one. This will work better. So, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Anika, for being online to vote in with us. Um, that will wrap it up for um, today's Encompass Live, which you can also get to from our website. You see, I start typing in Encompass and two things come up our newsletter, but our Encompass Live show. You can also just type us into your search engine of choice. So far in the world, Encompass Live is the only thing called that. Yay. So you can get to us from there. Um, I was going to show you, uh, this is where our archives will be. Today's show is being recorded and will be posted into our archives probably later this afternoon, as long as YouTube cooperates. Um, it'll be the most recent ones at the top here, so it'll appear here. I have links to recording. Um, we don't have a presentation in this case. And then we'll have a link to the guidebook itself so that you have that um, there available. Everyone who attended this morning and who was registered for today's show will automatically get an email letting you know when it's ready. And we'll also announce it out onto our mailing lists and um, so people know that it's there. So that will be where the archive will be. I um, hope you join us next week when our topic is One Book for Nebraska Kids and Teens 2017. And Sharon just talked about this. We were talking earlier. about it at the beginning. Um, here in Nebraska, you know, you have your one book, one states, one book, one cities. Um, a while ago, we kept in Nebraska of having uh, one book for kids and teens. Um, and next week, Sally Snyder, who is our coordinator of children and young adult library services here at the Library Commission, will be talking about the books for the upcoming, well, the current year, 2017. Um, and I believe they've also are in the midst of picking or have already decided on the books for 2018 too. So maybe we'll get a heads up on what those are. Can't remember. But um, Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians by our own Nebraska native Brandon Sanders is our teen book, our kid book. And the teens are the best. Yeah. So those are our books. So join us next week to learn more about that. Um, also, I've got more sessions that will be coming up added here. You can see we do have, Sharon mentioned, our state conference is in October, um, but it is the one week of the year that we take off from Encompass Live. Otherwise, we're here every Wednesday except for the Wednesday of our state conference, our uh, Nebraska Library Association and Nebraska School Librarians Association joint conference. Um, everybody's at conference that week, so we don't do a show. <laughs> um, so if you are, are already, um, go ahead and register. Registration is still open until later this month. I don't recall that my head. 23rd? Yeah. Look at the website. Um, so I'll be adding more shows here, so look here for them. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. If you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there and you'll get notifications. Like here, I just posted this morning. Log in on the fly for today's show. When recordings are available, they're posted on here. 
so that you keep up with that. So if you are um, on Facebook and checking out things there, give us a like and keep up to date on what we're doing. Other than that, let me just check my questions. Now we're good. Just a thank you, super informative. You're welcome. Very glad to have hopefully it was. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. And we'll see you next time on End of the Slide. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Recording.